Hello, we are going to be talking about the relationship statuses of male and females that do not classify themselves as male or female, and are not just straight and gay. We will also be looking at one of the 57 genders and how to classify relationship status. Then we will be concluding with not being a race. So to begin, we will be using this chart. It is familiar to some of us as a punet square. However, we will not be looking at dominant and recessive genes, instead we will be using it to look at relationships. To get started, we will put a genderless man and woman at the top and another set of genderless beings on the left. Then we will drop the top genderless people down into the following rooms and then do the same to the others on the left. Now we will classify what most people who believe in gender binary and the binary sexuality will classify these relationships. The top left being a man and man so they are a homo couple. The top right being a female and man making them a hetero couple. The bottom left is also a hetero couple being that it is a man and a woman. And the bottom right is two females making them a homo couple. However, that's if we assume their sexualities. So for this, let's color code them to give them sexual tendencies. For this, we are still accepting the gender binary. We will use the common colors for our male and female, blue being the normal tendency for males and pink being a normal tendency for females. And now, let's change a few things. Let us make the male at the top want to become a woman with his inner frustration towards women. Then the following males under the column that were associated with that male are now males with inner frustrations to become a woman. Let us not only do the change in a male, but we will also change the female into wanting to become a man. We will also have to change the females associated to this female accordingly. So, I ask an open question. What are these newly formed relationships called? I believe it is fair enough question. If a man wants to become a woman and is in a homo relationship with a man that still considers himself a man, then what would a relationship like this be called? Same for the females. I've never seen a partner in a homo relationship get a sex change to be with their partner. But let's stop right there and continue to the next part of this and see if we can solve the question. For this new example, we will be using a man. This man classifies as a woman and is attracted to men. This is shown with the pink man on top being the man we are looking at, and the blue man on bottom being who the top one is attracted to. The top man gets a sex change. So now he is a she that can classify as a woman. She is still attracted to men, so this would have to make her hetero, correct? Now something happens and our female suddenly becomes attracted to females. Well, now here's where things get tricky. Does this make our original subject hetero or homo, since they started as a man? Wait a second, we can't assume people's genders. After all, that's what this is all about. The female that our subject was attracted to was a female that associated with being a male and got a sex change to become male thanks to our subject. Now that we have a female that classifies as a female and a male that classifies as a male, is this a normal hetero relationship? I'd assume so. I'd say now they can live happily and start a family, but that is not possible at this point. Oh shit. Now our subject has gone back to liking men and now associates with being male. Let's just continue before too many people get triggered. So here is a gender that I found in the 57 genders being intriguing. It is one that is commonly associated with Native Americans. Which ones? I have no idea. It is called two-spirited meaning a person not associated with being a single gender, but both genders at the same time. <clears throat> you... Jen? Ha ha! Most of the two-spirited natives that I found had tits, so me being me, I assume it's a male trapped in a female's body. But I have no clue, and that isn't what the definition said, and I'm a dick for the dictionary. Furthering the plot for this video, we have this two-spirited lady, if it's correct for me to call her a lady since they have the body of a lady, with male and female tendencies. Shown by the male and female astronomical symbols, so this video is about relationships, so let's look at this. What is the relationship for this two-spirited female when linked to these? So if the male side is attracted to females and the female side is attracted to males, what do you call this person's sexuality? Is it hetero two-spirit? Let's try another. So both male and female spirits are passionate for males. So if the male spirit is attracted to males, that would be homo. 
But the female spirit is attracted to males as well, so that is hetero. This is confusing. Hmm, let's see. It's probably called being two-spirited, homo male spirit, hetero female spirit. That's a long name for a sexuality. Woo. God damn it, female across the board? Well, it should be almost the same as the other one. Two-spirited, hetero male spirit, homo female spirit. Shit, the names have a lot of syllables. This one should be easy. Homo two-spirited. You know what's wrong with all of this, though? I'd just like to point out how difficult this is to figure out someone's sexuality. And by doing so, we have to make this even more difficult. How, most of you ask? Well, we assumed all these gender affiliations and the sexual attractiveness of the female two-spirited individual. We never thought what this person was attracted to. So here, figure this shit out with the 57 genders. So now, we know how difficult it would be to find a partner if we use 57 genders. But that is the point, I suppose, about not wanting to have to be in a gender binary. That there is no need to classify someone and give whatever it is a name. Most of these non-binary people... Oh shit. Non-binary is a gender, so I have to say something else. Most of these people that have their own genders swing both ways, sexually. So classifying a sexuality normally just tends to be homo or hetero. Or, in layman's terms, being bisexual. If a person can break out of their gender and not be classified by one, then we should be able to do the same with races, right? Now, I did just imply that a person is born and is born with their sexuality. I'm not implying, nor am I disagreeing with someone being born and defined by a sexual preference. Anyways, not being defined by a race. Here's our subject, a raceless man. Now he's a black man. Not an African American, because we don't know where he is from, nor where he currently resides. So, he is black, much like I'm white. This black man wants to be identified as Asian, more preferably, Japanese. Why do I say this? Well, I personally knew three different black people that would tell others that they were part Japanese. Yes, I am sure about the Descendants theory that is strong, and yes, I've seen it, but I know for a fact that you are just saying you are part Japanese because you watch anime. I get off subject, and now I get back on subject, so can a black man become another race? Just like people who associate with being one gender can switch to the gender that they prefer. I don't want to be a dick and say the name of the individual because I believe it is a racist, overused joke and takes away from a medical condition. Let's switch to another race. A Mexican. What does this Mexican want to become? White. Why? Because of an orange man with a golden piece on top. Isn't it funny how he looks like a Mexican construction worker? And that's all folks. Thanks for watching.